Good morning, and welcome to the wonderful world of Des Moines. Now just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. How's it going, Craig? It's doing good, Mom. So, I was thinking maybe in a little bit we could make some brownies for when Rose and Rich come over. Right. What are you doing right now? Painting a picture. What's the picture of? Christmas. I see. Oh, very good. How many days left on our calendar, Craig? Our 20, countdown? Mama. 20 more days until we go to Florida. We're almost there. What's one thing you want to bring on your in your carry-on on the trip? Roscoe, my <laughs> iPad. Oh, do you want to show people who Roscoe is? Here's Roscoe. What is he? A red crown crane? Yes. And he has been on many vacations with us. He usually goes in Craig's backpack and he just sticks his head out so he can see what's going on. Right. Alexa, resume. I'm going to pay a little visit to Marshall's because the mug I bought here last week that I like so well, I put it in the dishwasher and apparently it's not dishwasher safe. So, and it ruined it. So I wanted to see if I could find another. Craig's already down there smelling the candles. Let's see. I think I'm out of luck. I don't think they have my mug anymore. They sold them all, of course, because they were so adorable. Well, at least I tried. I do have some really cute ones. This one's really cute. But um, I like this mug a lot. That's really pretty. These little salt and pepper shakers are really cute. They're $12.99. Craig's checking out the Halloween stuff. You're really winding that up. Craig, answer the phone. <laughs> That's cute. It's actually... A candle and it smells nice. Let's see how much it is. $14.99. Smells floral, like maybe like magnolia. <laughs> Added some more Halloween since I've been here. Oh, I like that. That's very cool. Craig, did you see this one? It is $16.99. Got a lot of little ghosties with plants coming out of their head. And they're $5.99. I think this is cute. And it is $7.99. What do you think of that, Craig? Yeah, it's an hourglass. Yeah. My mom and dad always had an hourglass that Craig really liked that my mom ended up giving him. Doing the coffee mug? No, well, I haven't found one yet like it. So I might be out of luck. There's a little kitty on a pumpkin. And lots and lots of skulls. This one's kind of cool. $12.99. Skulls aren't really my thing though. That's really cool. For $16.99, that's pretty nice. All kinds of Halloween rugs. I like this. My only problem is I'm afraid it'll be covered with dog and cat hair, but it's pretty heavy, so I should be able to vacuum it without the vacuum sucking it up. I do really like that. And they have full-size plush fall blankets. And this one's very nice. 90 by 90. 
it's a four queen size bed. <laughs> Halloween plush for your pets. I mean, this is huge. This is obviously for a very big dog. We also have a few costumes. Oh, I should put those little wings on Bernie. I'm not sure he's an angel though. I like the little necktie. That is cute. Oh, look at that. I don't know how people get their pets to wear hats though because none of mine would ever tolerate that. This is a cute Fisher Price Little People set. And it is $6.99. That's actually a really good price for Fisher Price Little People. They do have some costumes. These are little boy ones. There's a space one over there. The other side of Craig. That's cute. And here's some adorable little girl ones. That's so cute. And let's see. What's the price? This one's $34.99. How cute that is. This one's $39.99, like a little Cinderella. And this one is $24.99 for the little, like, Jasmine. A little mermaid. Even has a tail. Very cute. I also love these skeleton cats for $12.99. And Craig's playing with the dog toys over there. And these teeny tiny little ones are cute. Those would look cute in my second. I have two holes in my ear. And I just wear the little stud in there that I got them pierced with. But those are cute. Here's some little mini mouse. There's some more little ghosties. Those are really cute. There's a Slytherin mug. Casper. You don't see Casper very often. <laughs> sadly, not the mug I'm looking for. Believe me, I have plenty of Halloween mugs. I just really like that one. Everyone, this is Greggy Viver here, and today we're making brownies. And this is our favorite brownie mix, the Garadali double chocolate. I just think they have a more rich flavor. Oh, the cat's meowing. <laughs> it's interrupting. <laughs> Naturally. Oh no, it wasn't eggs this time. So, um, let's see what the first thing it says to do. I already preheated the oven to 325 to give us a head start. What does it say on the back? Place water, oil, and egg in a medium bowl and stir until fully mixed. Okay, so we gotta start with putting the egg, the water, and the oil. So we need one egg in there. And then how much, oh, that's okay. How much oil does it say? Mm. It's on the top. It's on the, in their directions. Oh. One third cup. Okay, so you need, that's the one third cup and there's the oil. Oh uh, no. Okay. One fourth cup of water. Okay. And I'm trying doing it this way today, seeing if this just makes it easier than having to go back and forth from the sink. Good job. That was exactly right. Okay. And then what does it say to do after you've added those? Um, uh, add brownie mix? No, first you mix this up really good. Let me see the box, but I already read it. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Um... Yeah, it says place the water, oil, and egg in a bowl and stir until fully mixed. So you'll probably want to use that whisk to get it all together. Why did you say so? <laughs> okay. And then after that's all mixed together, 
you're going to add the brownie mix. Okay, and then, okay, we also have to remember to spray that pan. And we might need the scissors to open that brownie mix. Okay. I'm gained. Okay. Let's see if you can do it that way, otherwise we'll have to get the scissor. Get the scissors. Okay, can you get them out of that drawer over there? Good job cutting that off. Craig's gotten really good at cutting. Now. Now what's the next step? Mix it. Mm-hmm. Mix it on up. Craig, do you like the Power Rangers? Yeah, I used to watch him. Who's your favorite Power Ranger? The Red Ranger. Do you know what year the Power Rangers In the started? 1990s. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know any lines from the Power Rangers? No. Go, go, Power Rangers! Oh, oh. Do you like Land Before Time? Yep. You just recently watched all of the Land Before Time movies, didn't you? Yeah. How many Land Before Time movies were there? Fourteen. Yeah, that's a lot. Which one's your favorite? The Stone of Cold Fire. Who's your favorite character on Land Before the Time? The Tronco. Do you know any of the voice actors? Well, there's Thomas Decker, Jeff Bennett, Annie McAfee, Kenneth Mars, Linda Gary, Frank Welker, Rob Carlson, Tress Benelli. How's that? Okay, now we're just going to pour it into the pan. I know this seems like a pretty easy recipe, but mm -hmm. it's good for Craig to learn to follow the instructions and stay engaged. Maybe sometime we'll tackle making brownies from scratch. It's just that the ones in the mixes are so good, it's, it's hard to spend the extra time to make the other ones. I kind of wanted to try uh, making s'mores brownies today, but we don't have any marshmallows, and I thought we did. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Now, for a glass pan, it says to cook them 43 to 48 minutes, so I think we'll start at 45. And Craig's busy licking the spatula. <laughs> you put those in the oven. And tell Alexa, 45 minutes. Alexa, set the timer for 45 minutes. All right. 45 minutes, starting now. <laughs> this will probably be a, a little bit of a shorter video today because my sister's coming over to visit tonight. So we won't have a lot of time to do vlogging. Ready? Ready. Craig, do you like the Jurassic World movies? Yeah, the first one is the best. Yeah, I remember. We went and saw that at the theater. Mm-hmm. Who was in it? I don't know. It was Wayne Knight. Yeah, I can't remember the uh, name of the person I'm trying to think of. Have you seen any of the other ones? No, two and three. What's your favorite thing about the Jurassic World movies? The dinosaurs. <laughs> when we go to Universal, what will we do there? Ride the Jurassic Park River Adventure. Yeah, and I don't know. They might still have the Jurassic Park Tribute Store open. I'm not sure because the Halloween Tribute Store opens soon. But it's in a different location, so we could get to go to the Jurassic Park Tribute Store. Yeah. And these are done. And now we're frosting them. And I like to frost the brownies yeah. before they're cooled off. Are you having, you're doing okay. So instead of actually spreading the frosting on them, we're just going to drop it 
to drop it on there in dollops as Craig is doing, and then it will melt and will spread it when it gets melty. Otherwise, it'll tear up the whole surface of the top. Mm. Craig's doing a good job because this takes some eye-hand coordination. Yeah. Let's see. Craig left me, but here they are. I got them all frosted. I just had to wait a few minutes until that frosting got soft, and then it spread really easily. I like to put the frosting on before they're cool because it just makes them extra fudgy. I actually did it one time by mistake, <laughs> and my kids liked it so much that that's the way we always do it now. Well, mmm, tastes delicious. Yeah, they're really good. Oh, was that the brownies he made? Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10, right? Mm hmm. Chomping Mouse, a Native American of Friendship and Sacrifice by Misty Schroll. Narrated by James Earl Jones. Long, long ago, there was a mouse. She was a mouse like any other mouse. Nose to the ground, running here and there, only seeing what was right in front of her. Except for one difference. She had a dream. She heard a story about a story the old ones told about somewhere far away. The high places where life was good, and she dreamed of going there. Come with me, she said to the other mice. There is a better place for us. But you did not want a different life. So all alone, she went to find the high places. She scurried along until she came to a river. The water was running fast and looked deep. How would she get across? Then she heard a low, raspy voice. Hello. Jumping and shot, the mouse looked around and saw a large frog sitting under a leaf. Hello, she responded, tilting her head in curiosity. Who are you and where are you going? Asked the mysterious frog. Oh, I am just a mouse like any other mouse. But I have a dream. I am going to the high places. They are beyond anything I can imagine, but I know how I can get there. I am Grandfather Frog, rumbled the frog. I know of the high places and am touched by the eagerness of your heart. Your journey will be long and hard, but because of your great longing, I will give you a gift to help you. Close your eyes. The mouse squeezed her eyes shut and her grandfather frog said, Jump! Jump as high as you can! The little mouse crouched down and jumped as she did. She found her legs grow longer and longer. Your new name is Jumping Mouse. Where these long legs will cover many much distance, cried grandfather frog. Jumping Mouse opened her eyes to see her wonderful new long legs. She turned to thank the frog, but he had disappeared. I wish I could have, have told him how grateful I am, for now I can surely cross the river, she said to herself, and jumped over the water. The wide grassy plain started on the other side of the river. Now my journey has truly begun, thought Chubby Mouse. She hopped and hopped and hopped until she was very hot and tired. Looking for a cool place to rest, she noticed a massive mound in the middle of the grass. As she inched closer to shelter under its shade, it moved. It was a buffalo. Jumping Mouse sat very still because she was afraid that she would be stepped on. Timidly, she looked up and was surprised to see that the buffalo was crying. Brother Buffalo, why are you crying? she asked. I have lost my sight, said the huge buffalo, and without my eyes, I cannot tell which grasses are good and which poison will poison me. So I will die. A great pity filled Chubby Mouse's heart as she rested her paw on Brother Buffalo. I am so sorry for your loss, but do not fear. My name is Jumping Mouse, and your journey has to not ended yet. For I will give you a gift. You will now be known as Eyes of a Mouse. Suddenly, the Buffalo could see, but the Jumping Mouse is surprised. The world had gone dark all around her. 
as if twilight had fall, fallen on the moonless night, for in giving the buffalo this new name, she had given him her own sight. Chubby Mouse could hear eyes of a mouse rumbling with joyous laughter as she rushed through the grass in circles, and she smiled wool hearted. The buffalo exclaimed, I would like to thank you. Is there anything I can do for you? I must cross the plains to go to the mountains where the high places are. But I cannot see, said Chummy Mouse. Will you be my guide? So together they travel across the plains until they reach the foot of the mountain. I am sorry, but this is as far as I can go. For this is the end of the plains. I was not made to travel up the mountain, said Eyes of a Mouse. I understand, said Chummy Mouse. I cannot see, but I can smell the crisp air of the mountain. I have hope I will find the high places. So saying goodbye to the buffalo, she went on. Chummy Mouse knew the mountain rose high before her. The sweet smell of grass was now replaced by a strong scent of pine and moss. Holding her dream, dream close to her heart, she took a breath and started to climb. Feeling her way of ground tree roots and following the scent of the mountain breeze, she hopped and hopped and hopped until she was very hot and tired. Panting for breath, she found a soft object with a large saddle where it was cool. As she leaned up against it, it moved. It was a wolf. Chubby Mouse sat very still because she was afraid that she would be eaten. In the silence, she could hear the wolf crying, crawling closer to the sound. Chubby Mouse bravely asked, Sister Wolf, why are you crying? I have lost my sense of smell, said the wolf. Without my nose, I cannot hunt, so I will die. Chubby Mouse's fear was replaced with pity and reached out, reaching out. Out, she placed a comforting paw on Sister Wolf's face. I am so sorry for your loss, but do not fear. My name is Chubby Mouse, and your journey has not ended yet, for I can give you a gift. You will be known as Nose of a Mouse. Suddenly, the wolf could smell all the things of the earth around her, but as Chubby Mouse expected, she herself could no longer smell the crisp mountain air. She could not sense anything beyond her reach. For she had given the wolf not only a new name, but also her own, but all, you know, also her own, also her own sense of smell. Chummy Mouse could hear Nose of Mouse's joyous howl as she returned her precious sense, and she lovingly smiled. The path in the head may be more challenging now, but the joy she was able to give it, to give it was worth it. Nose of Mouse said. I would like to thank you for such a wondrous gift. Is there anything I can do for you? I must climb the mountain to find the high places. I cannot see or smell the way, Chubby Mouse said. Will you be my guide? So together they climbed higher and higher up the mountain. As they reached the tree line, Chubby Mouse could feel the crisp wind getting stronger. She could hear the soft scraping of Nose of Mouse's claws as the dirt gave way to solid rock, and knew they were near the top. I am sorry, but this is as far as I can go, for this is the end of my territory, and there is no clover for food for me above the tree line, said Nose of a Mouse. I understand, said Jumping Mouse. I cannot see, and I cannot smell, but I have a dream. I will find the high places. So saying goodbye to the wolf, she went on. But the journey was now very hard. <laughs> And the poor Chummy Mouse could not see and she could not smell, so she did not know where she was and did not know where to go. All the mountain rocks felt the same under the small paws, and all she could hear was the howling of the wind. So she stopped hopping and sat very still. A little tear found its way down her cheek. She was so very lost. How could would she find the high places now? Suddenly, she heard a raspy croak. Jumping Mouse, why are you crying? She knew that voice. It was Grandfather Frog. I have a dream to go to the high places, cried Chubby Mouse. But since I cannot see and cannot smell, I do not know where to go. Fear not, Jumping Mouse, for I will give you one more gift, said Grandfather Frog. Jump, jump now as high as you can. So Chubby Mouse crouched down and she jumped. Higher and higher she went, and behind her, she heard Grandfather Frog rumble, Jumping Mouse, because you have selflessly given all that was special to you, 
I give you the gift of freedom and great sight. You will live in the high places. Open your eyes. Jumping Mouse opened her eyes. She saw an endless blue sky, bright with sunlight. Her body felt weightless as she guided on the gilded, glided on the wind. Below, she saw the world spread out before her. There was no limit to where, to where she could go. With great exhilaration, she saw higher and heard Grandfather Frog's voice echoing all around her. For I have named you Eagle. The end. And this is Craigie Bavers saying, keep on having a great day and we'll see you real soon.